to you notes know, just so I didn't forget my name. <laughs> um, so I apologize for, for having to do, do notes. But um, I am Jennifer Stano. Um, I am an abstract artist. I'm based in Prairie Lake, Minnesota. Um, I have a studio in Prairie Lake as well as um, a studio up in Northeast Minneapolis in the North of King Building um, in the Northeast Arts District. So I work out of both locations. Um, and yeah, I can just give a brief little bit about my background and then I'll just talk a little bit briefly about my inspiration for, um, for these pieces and just kind of some of my inspiration in general in the process. But um, I was an art major in college, New York, and art history. Um, but backing up before that, little, little Jennifer definitely was um, a fan of Bob Ross. I was a child of the 80s, so grew up loving Bob Ross and started painting when I was really young. Um, my dad built me this adorable little easel that I still have um, as an adult. But um, yeah, I continued painting all through, through college and then um, I've been showing galleries around the, the state um, as well as out state, um, some solo group shows, and then I sell work through, um, through my studio as well as online. Um, but yeah, just a little about, um, about my process. Um, you know, I paint kind of what I call like, nature-based abstractions. Um, you know, my inspiration really does come primarily from the natural world. So you can see sometimes images of stones or roots or rocks, kind of that organic um, shapes, even kind of some cellular types of, of images. Those are motifs that really kind of work their way into my, into my art. Um, but I, I find inspiration you know, everywhere on my daily walks, my daily runs. I do try to spend just as much time in nature as possible, and um, I find that you know that I can look at a crack in the pavement or just the particular shade of blue in the sky that day. It's obviously there's a lot of blue in some of these right now, so um, I find inspiration really um, kind of around me in the little in the littlest things, and it's I would describe my job as kind of that you know act of translating the beauty in the moment into through my lens of abstract painting um, you know so I'm really attempting to kind of capture you know the um, emotion of the experience less so the physical representation of what I'm looking at um, so even though my work is highly abstracted I'm really trying to kind of convey that that essence that I feel um, and the emotion that I feel in in the moment um, you know, additionally to my paintings, I'm really kind of inspired by the unconscious interior landscapes that we all share. Um, I paint very intuitively, um, and I think that brings kind of an emotional and spontaneous quality to my work. Um, and the intention is really for the humanness to come through. I don't want to overwork or correct things. I like having that, um, that sense of the, the human touch in the pieces. So I don't try to, to polish the works too much. I like those, you know, the, as Bob Ross calls it, happy little accidents. <laughs> you know, it may be a happy little treat, but I also have happy little <coughs> accidents, and I find those those moments really special and captivating. Um, so when I paint too, sometimes it's a very fast process. I paint really quickly in certain stages to kind of allow that um, the energy to come through without the interference of that analytical mind editing what I'm doing in the, at the moment. Um, so in addition to kind of the inspiration from the natural world, and I'm also very interested in the seen and unseen forces in life. Um, you know, I'm interested in what lies beneath something, it might, whether it's below the physical surface of the earth or if that's more metaphorical. Um, you know, it's, I'm essentially interested in what lies outside of our our range of normal perception. Um, and that, that ties back to, to nature, but kind of on a broader scale, um, really referring to kind of the underlying invisible forces and energies that make up our world. So I would say that that really kind of forms the more conceptual basis of my work. Uh, in terms of process, I this is all oil paint, so I work um, primarily in oil and canvas. And so that's kind of a unique um, process simply because of the long drying times involved. It allows me to, or requires me I should say, to um, work slowly I have, um, over 
courses of, of many, many days and weeks usually. So even though I might be painting really quickly in the moment, I have to really pause and reflect and kind of live with a piece for a while and let it almost tell me what, what it wants to do next. So there's a process of very kind of active listening that I have to do while I'm waiting for a layer to dry. Um, and that's kind of a fun, unique process. I can't finish a painting in one sitting. It has to, has to develop over, over time. Um, so I enjoy, you know, usually doing a variety of techniques. Some, sometimes it's the oil is, is thinner. Sometimes I really kind of build up the surface. Um, there's, I'll use palette knife to make little scratches and marks in it. A lot of times I'll even use, I'll use an oil bar sometimes to bring in a more drawing gesture as opposed to just kind of a painting gesture. So that a lot, that gives me some variety in, in the, the type of marks that I make as well. Um, but it's, it's a very fun, um, fun process and oil is, has given me a lot of interesting ways to to explore just through the kind of the flow of nature and the viscosity of it. So, um, but yeah, I think that's these are just kind of some brief comments about my process. But I would just also like to thank everyone for coming out and um, thank the Hutchinson Center for the Arts for the opportunity. And it's been really great to be here with Lisa and her beautiful work. It's neat to see kind of how our pieces play together. So, um, yeah. Introducing myself and my little background, um, I'm Lisa Truex. Um, my studio is outside Winona, Minnesota, and I'm also a professor of art and design. Um, I started out also studio art major and doubled in graphic design, so I kind of still have my hands in both worlds, although I focused on ceramics and that's what I got my master's in. Um, my work kind of, I've always been a, a collector of things, places that I go, like those locally important places I grew up kind of. You know, a lot of playing in the woods, like a lot of us kind of um, unsupervised 80s kids, um, which was great for me actually. Um, so those local places are really important to me and thinking about like the effect that nature has on our psyche, our health, and just like personal importance, especially in those local places more so than we all can appreciate the grandiose places like Yellowstone, but it's also something that's not really accessible to a lot of people, and I do a lot of reading about things like um, environmental psychology, like the effect that these places have on us, and it was really interesting during like the worst parts of the pandemic to see how many people reached for nature who maybe had never done that or hadn't done that in a long time, and kind of makes me feel like some of those things are sort of built into some part of us. So my work is also abstract. Um, some of them are based on specific places and some of them are more just memories of colors and textures of places, whether it's the Mississippi River down the road from my house or the trails where I like to hike or run or places that I might travel to. Um, so there are some pieces that are specific to place and some that are more just kind of general places. I also um, have a sense of environmentalism in some of my pieces, places that are threatened. So things like um, Isle Royale National Park or things about red tide things like that, and how um, some of these colors and textures might bring natural appearing things into our interior spaces. Um, I have a good excuse for my rock collecting now, where it's appropriate, you know, there's places where it's not permissible to gather, and there's places like my yard or the side of the road where you can pick up rocks and gravel and recycled things, so I combine traditional ceramic materials and glazes with things that I collect and process to give a really specific direct sense of place with some pieces. You can't always tell what those things are. Sometimes you can. So like, you know, the brown clay from my yard, the yellow clay from my yard where I used to live in Michigan, sand from the river, um, spent a lot of time in the Mississippi River. So there's, for example, an island at the end of my road that looks very natural, but it's completely man-made. They just dump all the dredge sand on it every year, but like the animals and plants have kind of taken it over, but it's also completely synthetic. So for me, that line of what's natural and what's not is very interesting um, because sometimes we can't really tell. Um, and those are kind of um, prescribed um, experiences, you know, where they put the trail, where the borders are, um, versus what's actually truly wild and if that's a thing that even exists anymore. I'm also really interested in geology. Um, I mean, using the kiln as a tool to sort of mimic 
things that might happen to these waste materials that we leave behind over millennia um, in a more rapid fashion if we were heating these things up and melting them. Um, ceramics is obviously mostly like mined materials and that can have environmental issues. I'm trying to use more local materials in my work to kind of help balance that out a little bit. Um, but I use a lot of like too much glaze on purpose to get some of these uh, surface effects on my pieces. Um, so there's in all ceramics um, some element of risk involved. And in my work, I think, I mean, I know what colors are going in there in general, but I really never know what anything's going to look like until I open the kiln. It's not like making a mug and dipping it in white glaze, and I know it's going to be white when I take it out or whatever. Um, so I'm kind of using the kiln as a, maybe like a co-author, I would put it in the work, because um, there's that transformative sense um, that happens that's sort of out of your control, and I've known some artists who really don't like have a hard time dealing with that, but. Um, I like that and it kind of forces you to step back and accept failure as part of success, I guess. Um, and maybe not really knowing exactly what's going to happen, you know, sometimes it's bad when you've got a deadline coming up. Um, so I would invite people to look at them and think about, you know, if it reminds you of places that you've been. I think often the things that sticks with us from a place isn't necessarily like a photograph. You need to like put that phone down a little bit when you're somewhere, but like what do you remember? Is it the way that the waves lapped on the shore, you know, the color of the trees, those are the things that I'm kind of more interested in in a lot of um, what I'm doing with these works. Um, lots of places that I've been, but a lot of things with the, you know, the upper Midwest, especially again, um, there's a piece over here that was done after um, I spent three weeks as the artist in residence on Isle Royal last summer, and then the piece over here is a new one that I did, and I'm thinking about doing it in a much larger scale um, kind of thinking about mapping and different ways of understanding a space outside of actually spending time in that space. Um, I also obviously work with ceramics mostly on the wall. I don't normally do pedestal pieces um, anymore. I'm kind of thinking about bringing it into your space versus um, putting things on a pedestal as a discrete object is a little more interesting um, to me at least. So I like doing large installations of ceramic pieces on the wall. Um, Thanks again to Hutchinson and thanks for everyone for coming out and seeing our work. So we'll take some questions. <laughs> so feel free to ask some questions if you have any for the artists. They are here to answer them for you. I have never worked with oil, so I'm really curious when you, do you have to do one color at a time or can you do multiple colors and they kind of just hang mm -hmm. out and don't always mix as well? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You can, I definitely paint with multiple colors at a time, but it just kind of comes with experience to know what you can, um, what colors you can push into each other. Um, where is where is that line before it turns to mud? <laughs> you know how much you can really mix, and and sometimes yeah, it's it's a process of pushing it as far as you can, and then saying nope, gotta let that one dry. Um, so I do a combination of wet and wet as well as wet over dry. Um, it really kind of depends on the effects that I'm going for. Some of, um, you know, in a lot of the paintings, you can see some some blurring, some blending, where I am really actively kind of pushing the colors together. Um, and a lot of times too, like even in this painting, the, the green in there is only a, a result of the blue and yellow blending. There is no actual green paint. So sometimes I will, you know, do a lot of the the blending on on the canvas um, just through that, that wet on wet technique. So. It's kind of reminiscent of a um, I've worked mm -hmm. that before, so yeah. it kind of reminds me of that. Exactly, yeah. Any other questions?